This is literally my worst nightmare, having multiple cameras pointed at me at one time. In this episode, stick around for spinning, knitting, crocheting, special guests like Gigi from Gigi Made It, Tony Lipsy of TL Yarn Crafts, a swag bag from The Retreat, a chicken, this cow, cat one, cat two, and cat three. Hi, my name's Mark and welcome to my channel. Join me this week as I go to a yarn retreat, a retreat for knitters, crocheters, yarn enthusiasts, hosted by my local shop Around the Table Yarns in Shaker Heights, Ohio. If you've never been on a knitting or crocheting retreat before, come with me and see what it's all about. Let's go. If I had a boat, I would sail out. Take every brother and sister of mine. We'd row in the sunshine and sleep when it's dark. Hoping to find somewhere we can call home But it's black, yeah it's black Oh the water's black Cause it's black, it's all black, black water Join me on this somewhat gray morning from Bellwether Farm in Wakeman, Ohio. This weekend, I'm attending a knitting, crocheting, fiber retreat hosted by Around the Table Yarns, which is my local yarn shop based in Shaker Heights, Ohio. I wanted to bring you with me on this retreat to see what kind of activities they offer and to just get a feel for this special weekend that I had the chance to experience. First, I'll talk a little bit about our location. We are in Wakeman, Ohio about an hour west of Shaker Heights, and we are at Bellwether Farm. Bellwether is a camp, retreat, and education center, which is run by the Episcopal Diocese in Ohio. And something unique about this site is that they really aim to offer a sustainable living model. So they grow crops on the land, they raise animals on the land, and they also have solar-powered energy, and they try to have sort of the greenest possible building setup for this center. They offer farm-to-table meals by their team of chefs, and they host all sorts of events throughout the year, um, all sorts of groups, schools, clubs, um, groups like this, yarn shop, come to Bellwether for retreats, time to learn, grow, uh, build a community. So it's a really special place for a getaway, especially for this knitting and crocheting retreat. The property spans over 130 acres, and it includes farmland, woods, meadows, hiking trails, picnic pavilions, playing fields, and a five-acre pond. So. We didn't have a ton of time to explore, and with this retreat being in the winter, it may not be the ideal time for the hiking and running around, but the shop also offers late summer retreats, so depending on the time of year that you're here, there's so much to take advantage of. Here's a view of the room we stayed in. It felt pretty much like a hotel room, except that you're seated on this farm. So we have an incredibly peaceful view out the window. And it felt like rustic camping, except with modern amenities. So how did we spend our time at this retreat? Well, besides taking advantage of the farm and the grounds, we enjoyed meals. These were farm to table meals prepared by the team of chefs at Bellwether. And then Around the Table Yarns provided quite the variety of activities, both educational and social, during the retreat. There were demonstrations in spinning, blocking, mending, classes, everything from beginning crochet and Tunisian crochet to project-based classes, knitting techniques, math for knitters, and color theory workshops. And then quite a few social activities. There was social time throughout. 
things like a fashion show where you can show off your favorite handmade items, uh, farm tours that you could take to see the extent of the property, and there were also some self-care activities, things like chair massage sessions and life coaching appointments. So there was, again, a diverse number of activities you could take part in during this retreat. Right now, there's a little bit of footage of some of the spinning that was going on. Some of my friends, Elfrida and Paula, are great spinners. Paula spins uh, for Spinning Loft and also makes the bags that I've talked about in a previous video. And then another friend, Eliza, was learning how to spin on a wheel. And it was very cool to see some of these people with years and years of experience passing on some of these trades and hobbies to another generation. to all of the relaxing and learning, we had to shop. So there was a retreat shop set up with merchandise that is usually carried at Around the Table Yarns, as well as this pop-up from Kat of Why Not Fibers. We were extremely fortunate that Kat could join us at this retreat and bring her incredibly gorgeous colorways and beautiful farm-to-needle yarn. So this whole experience is thanks to Pam and Beth and the manager of the shop, Maeve, from Around the Table Yarns and Shaker. Specifically for this retreat, they brought in an all-star lineup of guests, including Tony Lipsy, Gigi Made It, and Max Daniels from Modern Daily Knitting. You probably already know Tony from TL Yarn Crafts. She has a great following here on YouTube, and for about a decade now, she has produced ingenious, beautifully creative, straightforward crochet and Tunisian crochet patterns and projects. She also has fantastic books on Tunisian crochet, and I think of her as the modern uh, guide or guru of Tunisian crochet. So 
if you're not already a Tony fan, make sure to follow her, try out some of her patterns. I'm going to talk about the juniper cowl specifically later in this video, but it was such a pleasure getting to be around Tony, visit with her, and learn from her during this retreat. The next special guest on this retreat was Gay Glassby. Gigi made it. If you don't already follow Gigi on Instagram, head over there and be ready to receive a wealth of love, affirmation, and inspiration. Gigi is iconic in many ways. Obviously, you see the striking orange that is her signature, but more than that, it is her affirming nature, her love, and her call for justice and equity in the world, both inside and outside of the crafting community. So take a moment every day to spend with Gigi. Another special guest of this retreat was Max Daniels, a life coach, and Max writes a column regularly for Modern Daily Knitting. Max is also an avid knitter, and having her present for these coaching sessions, and again, just as a source of inspiration, sort of an example of another pillar of the fiber community. And last but definitely not least is Kat from Why Not Fibers. Kat's yarn was shown on screen a couple minutes back. Gorgeous colors and beautiful earthy yarns. I'm going to link her shop below in the description box, so make sure to check out her fibers and read a little bit of her story. I definitely left the retreat feeling recharged and inspired, inspired by crafters around me and also inspired by some of these great teachers and celebrities in the fiber world. As Tony was one of our guests for this retreat, I prepared by making the juniper cowl. Several of us from the shop decided we would make our own versions of this sort of as a warm welcome and to show off one of her projects during the retreat. So here I'm showing where you can find the pattern on Ravelry. It's a really beautiful cowl using a puff stitch, and Tony specifically wrote it to use a combination of mini skeins. It's great if you already have mini skeins on hand or even leftover bits of fingering weight yarn from previous projects, or you could go and pick out yarn specifically for your juniper cowl. I ended up making mine out of two full skeins of Perth from Queensland United. I liked the colorways and had been eyeing them at my local shop, and I thought, I'll try this for a juniper cowl. Sometimes I struggle pairing colors together. I feel overwhelmed because the combinations and the choices are limitless. So for me, someone who can be overwhelmed by the choice, using two full skeins of striping or variegated yarn was my choice for this project. I feel that I'm a fairly weak crocheter. Um, I don't know. In the balance of things, I always feel more comfortable knitting, but I like to have crochet projects on the hook. I like to be able to break up my knitting time with crochet. And in this case, I was excited to make one of Tony's patterns specifically. Something really nice about this pattern is that once you get started and establish the rhythm, you just work. You don't have to turn the project back and forth. You're always working on the right side and you're always working your rounds over and over as it stacks uh, in the cylinder of this cowl. Another nice thing about this project is that it's pretty flexible. If you're using mini skeins, Tony instructs that you work with one mini skein until it runs out. You don't have to specifically count a certain number of rounds and cut your yarn. You just work until you run out of that color, then you join the next color. Similarly, if you want to make the cowl larger, you can add in more yarn, more yardage, more grams. Or if you run out or feel that the cowl is large enough for your frame, you can stop early. It's really nice that you can customize this project even as a beginner. Once you finish your juniper, you add a border to the top and bottom. 
I chose to match my border in blue for both the top and the bottom. And then my juniper is complete. I haven't blocked it yet. I don't always block every project I make, but I think when I do my next round of blocking, I'll probably give this a full wet block just to even out my stitches and give the whole thing a nice finished look. Here I am slipping it on and <laughs> fixing my wig, as I say. It's a nice cozy cowl. I like that it really comes up over the chin if you want it to, or you can space it out a bit and have it rest a little away from your face. And that's the gist of it. Here I am with my new husband, my first husband, my only husband, but we recently got married. <laughs> anyway, we were able to take a nice walk uh, around the property one afternoon. And again, this was a beautiful time for me to reflect on what it meant to be able to attend a retreat like this. This is the first knitting, crocheting, fiber-related retreat that I've ever been a part of. And I think it was so well executed there were so many moments offered to us that allowed us to really recharge, rest, reflect, and gather among like-minded people. Um, if you looked around at the group of people in attendance, it was a pretty diverse crowd, diverse in many ways. But if you were to look inside of all of us and see what we care about, see our hearts, there would be so much in common, so many points where we align. And I think that's one of the most beautiful gifts of crafting. Of course, you can spend time crafting in a solitary way. I love my alone time. I love to come home to a quiet house and knit or crochet in silence. <laughs> but if you've experienced crafting among friends or strangers, you know there's a pretty magical feeling that sets in where all of you join in the same rhythm and it's really rewarding. I think of it as a real gift. So this was that experience multiplied. Before I close out this video, I want to walk you through a little bit of the swag that I received in my retreat goodie bag. Besides a book from Max Daniels, we were given a container of Happy Skin Hand Balm. This is beautifully scented and heats up with your skin and, so far, is something I like to use. I always like to keep lotion or some sort of balm on hand, especially in the winter so that I don't snag any of my yarn over dry skin. And then in this pouch, we've got all sorts of goodies. A tape measure from Around the Table Yarns. Always something good to have on hand. A small sample pack of soak. This is a wool wash that I like to use. I have 
an extremely large bottle of their fig scented wool wash, which will last me years, a tapestry or darning needle. I have a notions video coming out in the next couple of weeks and you'll see I have a large collection of those and some locking stitch markers. And then this tool was pretty cool. It's got a keychain from the shop and then three sort of half crochet hooks or mini crochet hooks. You could use these to crochet if you were, I don't know, abandoned in the wilderness or something, but I think the idea of it is that you can use them as stitch fixers for your knitting. And then these markers, which are really beautiful. They are in Gigi's signature orange, which I don't have a lot of orange. So I'm excited to add these to my collection of stitch markers. These are really beautiful, a nice array of characters and shapes there in a pretty great color. And the last item from this swag bag is uh, an enamel pin. And it's pretty cute. It's a sunshine <laughs> embracing several balls of yarn. So I think it's always fun to have little gifts, especially when they are surprise gifts uh, as a little bonus. Thank you for taking the time to watch today's video. I really appreciate any time you choose to spend with me here on the channel and I really enjoy getting to know you in the comments. Thank you to those of you who've reached out to me via Instagram or Facebook. It's wonderful to feel like I'm making connections and friends, some near and some far. If you don't already have a community of crafters in your area, I hope that you're able to find one. I'm extremely lucky to have the community that I've found in Northeastern Ohio, and I hope that you've enjoyed a glimpse into our time together at this knitting retreat. Thanks so much for watching, happy knitting, happy crocheting, and I'll see you next time. Bye. You say bye? Bye.